Doot. Hi everyone, welcome to Nick Flanagan Weekly. I'm Nick, and I'm here, and I'm wearing a hat, and that's okay. Thank you so much for listening. I am enjoying myself. I feel like I've had a weird not leaving the house kind of week. One of those weeks where you just don't really go anywhere. Um, you stay at, if you're someone who's sort of, quote, self un, self-employed, unquote, you, um, my go-to is to be here and try to get something done at my place. Um, so I'll have these, and it's been really rainy out, so I've, and ho- if it hasn't been rainy, it's been really hot, so I've just been at home doing my thing. And, um, that's been fine. Watching, I'm dying up here with my mother. Which, we're almost done season two, so if you have another show to recommend, we'd love to know. Yesterday she made the great suggestion of Better Call Saul, but Better Call Saul, she hasn't seen Breaking Bad, so she can't watch Better Call Saul. I'd love to watch Better Call Saul, personally. Love the Odenkirk. Uh, My friend Andrew Johnston, a comedian, has a funny joke about how Breaking Bad was not for the gays. I'm sure that there are gay people listening who are like, no, I liked Breaking Bad, but talk to Andrew about it because he's got a funny take on it. Um, I'm still playing Fortnite. Sometimes I'm playing in groups in Fortnite and the other people who are playing have mics, which I always turn off because the people with the mics, most of these are kids. They all talk like, hey, what's up? And I go, oh my god, what am I doing? Playing, being bested by children. But you know, letting children beat you should happen more in life. Because that's just what they do, metaphorically. And if we let them beat us at games, we are essentially handing the keys to the future to them. And children are the future. Okay. That got weird somehow. Um, Huge torrential downpour yesterday. Avoided it. Uh, Torrential downpour of success. Avoiding that right now. I'm just on working on the stability part. That's why I'm doing four of these a week. Currently producing four of these podcasts a week. Yes, I know. You say, Nick Flanagan, weekly. Shouldn't it be weekly? No. No doesn't have to be weekly. It can be daily. It, it's a, a W-E-A-K. It is a celebration of weakness. And um, the fact that we've all got it. It's a disease that can only be cured by death. <laughs> Guys, look at my podcast. Weakness is a disease that can only be cured by death. I'll be doing comedy at... Uh, comedy bar on next Wednesday so uh, check out uh, jokes like that but no it's a it's a, it's a celebration of weakness and it's uh, a funny joke and I'm doing four of these a week for now so just enjoy the gift of time of my time and it's a, a way for me to this is good for me and it's good for you I'm gonna make stuff you're, if you like this, you're gonna listen, and everyone's happy. So, yeah. I'm seeing Smashing Pumpkins tonight. And I'm not talking about teenagers at Halloween. I'm seeing the band Smashing Pumpkins, most likely. It could go awry, but that's the plan. I'm seeing almost original lineup of Smashing Pumpkins. No Darcy. No Darcy Retzky. Smashing Pumpkins, I had a long period where I I wanted nothing to do with that band. I kind of think they're cool now. I mean, I don't think Billy Corgan's cool. That's just never going to happen. But apparently he's doing a good job running a wrestling organization. He, like so many Americans, seems to have very confused politics. I mean, Americans, North Americans, people, humans. His politics seem odd and confused. He seems like he had a tough childhood. 
And, um, but damn, man. Everlasting Gaze? I'm into it. That's how he sings. Smashing Pumpkins are interesting because you don't really know... Like, how many covers are there of Smashing Pumpkins out there? There aren't. You know? There's just, like, they're not a band... They're, everyone goes, oh, I hate his voice. Everyone goes, I hate his... People have expressed distaste with Billy Corgan's singing style before. That's just... It's a it's a specific thing. But... Um, nobody can do the songs the way he does them. So I haven't heard too many covers. If you've, heard, if you've heard some Smashing Pumpkins covers that you think are worthwhile, so I'm not talking about YouTube acoustics. I'm talking about real stuff. Major label shit. Good indie rock shit. Um, then email me at weeklypodcast at gmail.com W-E-A-K-L-Y podcast at gmail.com and you can do the same with questions or comments because I will read them on air if you'd like me to. Adam Mella wrote me back. He wanted me to let everyone know he has a uh, iPhone 6, I believe. I hope I, I'm saying the model right. An iPhone 6. Good for you, Adam. You've, you're have you four generations behind. I also have an iPhone 6. I really want better tech. <laughs> Someone give me better tech, please. I want a phone I can Fortnite on. Alright. Yeah, so gonna see Smash Pumps. Hopefully it's rad. I don't know. I, I'm reviewing it, so I, I can't make any judgments. But I always want things to be good. That's just the optimistic way of looking at things. You don't want things to be bad. You want things to be good. Although my mother's um, take on things is... Uh, you know, set your expectations low, that way you won't be disappointed. So that's another way of looking at it, which I also try to do. And I find having those two um, ways of looking at things, setting your expectations low while also hoping for the best, are um, these kinds of um, conflicting things. You wind up setting your expectations low. Things aren't the best, and you were hoping for the best secretly after, uh, underneath setting your expectations low. So, <sighs> human nature. Contradictory. I started watching the Donald Trump roast yesterday. I shouldn't talk about this stuff. I feel like I'm talking too much about politics and. Uh, you know, Alex Jones, censorship, it's all very tiring. But I watched the roast of Donald Trump on Comedy Central from only seven years ago. Like, not that long ago at all. Um, I'm not going to get into it. It's an entertaining roast. There's no denying that. Lisa Lampanelli was funny as hell. I'm sorry, Lisa Lampanelli, she had this period where she was very funny, and I, I hope we can all appreciate that. She had a period where she, like, pulled from old-timey comedy, and, you know, she just is a comedian, you know, and she just is the comedian, and, and it was, it's cool seeing someone be like that, like a, like a character, you know, um, larger than life because so many comics aim for basically what I'm doing right now. It's like a guy who rolled out of bed and is begging you for pity or someone who's like the cool dude in the dorm room. But there was a time when comedy was all about someone who was, hey, I'm a weird dude or I'm a character. Okay, just bear with, work with me on, on that idea. Um, yeah, that stuff was funny. But all these people were there who are now, like, ma either disgraced or major opponents of Donald Trump. John Legend and Christine Tagan were in the audience. Two people I've muted on Twitter, by the way. And, uh... Russell Simmons is watching it. It's just, like... Just a group of... Just 
it, it just exposed to me a slight variation of the atmosphere that led up to this situation that America's in right now. Where the right kind of celebrity is the person is viewed as a maverick who will save everybody. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Can't focus on that right now. I want to talk about the Saudi <laughs> Arabian thing that happened with Canada this week where they jailed some feminist activists in Saudi Arabia and uh, the Canadian ambassador or something said some thing like a mild rebuke not a major rebuke there was no threat and threats of sanction or anything there was a rebuke and then Saudi Arabia went ape shit and they ejected him I think they might have closed the embassy they and then they started on this sort of deep internet smack talk of Canada and they've also halted trade and they've pulled Saudi students from Canadian universities and there are apparently like a lot of Saudi Arabian students in Canadian universities and um, the government is like well you're gonna have to go to school in Frankfurt now um, but that's not all that's the stuff that's real. I mean, that's the stuff that's... Funny is the wrong word, but that's... I mean, that's the stuff with repercussions. There's trade stuff happening, like I just said. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if they're waiting for an apology. I don't know what they want. I think they're just trying to, like, prove that although they're a small, very small country, they have massive power, and that Canada is a very big country that maybe doesn't have as much power politically as it thinks. I don't know what they're trying to prove. They're just trying to say, don't stick your nose where it don't belong. And hang on, I actually need to get the image, bring the image up. So, a verified account. By the way, there's a Family Circus cartoon today where... Um, I think it's Billy is looking under the bed and his dog is next to him and he says, you're lucky, Barfy. You never have to remember where you left your shoes. It's your family circus minute. Okay. Getting back to this story. So in this kind of propaganda attack against Canada to just smother their reputation, Saudi Arabia printed a... Uh, tweeted out from a verified account that sounds like it's something close to their Ministry of Information, their st state sponsored, some, some leg of their state sponsored media. And it says, it has an image of um, an Air Canada plane heading towards Toronto's waterfront with the CN Tower very prominent in the center of it. And then in, it is red over the CN Tower and it says sticking one's nose where it doesn't belong and the plane is very low flying it's like looks like it's heading directly for the CN Tower <laughs> one of the tallest buildings which by the way I heard like a, a you know like a left leaning political commentator he didn't know what the I don't know if he was messing with it because he's kind of sarcastic but he was talking about with Sam Cedar he was talking about he just didn't know what the CN Tower was and he's shown this ignorance of Canada before and it's like you know, when you show ignorance of a country and you're talking about the country it, and you're a political commentator, it, it doesn't it doesn't help your arguments. So it's like, l l like do some research day of, man. Come on. All right. Anyway, sticking one's nose where it doesn't belong. That's what it says. The plane is flying at the CN Tower. Sticking one's nose where it doesn't belong. As the Arabic, as the Arabic saying goes, he who interferes with what doesn't concern him finds what doesn't please him. So everybody, all the Western folk online, 
essentially read this as an acknowledgement <laughs> that the Saudis were involved in 9-11 and they were basically saying, don't, we will, you know, we'll do 9-11 to you, Canada, if you keep butting in. Do I read it that way? I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't looked too deeply in Saudi involvement in 9-11, except that there were a lot of Saudi nationals who were um, flying those planes. But, you know, life's complicated, and I'm having a hard enough time, you know, sweeping the kitchen. So, I'm not too worried about it. Who did 9-11? If you think, if you know who did 9-11, email weekly podcast, W-E-A-K-L-Y podcast at gmail.com. Nick Flan Weekly on Twitter. Nick Flanagan Weekly on Instagram. I'm Nick Flan. Thanks for listening. Hope you're doing great.